Yo, 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 yo. What's going on? How we doing? How we feeling? Thank you guys for uh, stopping on by. So we got a strange kind of mid-Saturday edition of this. Yeah, weird. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Holy. Anyways, I uh, hope you guys are doing well. And once again, thanks for stopping by. So, um, during this like little, I guess, midday stream here, we're going to do just, you know, the usual bases. The, we're going to go over the review uh, for week 10. Then we're going to go over the updated power rankings for week 11. Check out uh, all of the matchups for week 11. And then finally, as we've been doing all this time for this season, uh, taking our picks for the remaining games. Because, like I said, it's Saturday and uh, the Thursday game already happened. Um, so, um, I guess without too much further ado, um, we'll just get around going. Uh, Alright. So, as per usual, let me get rid of this. We are going to start with the reviews for week 10. Okay. Ah, shit. Janae, what's going on, fam? Appreciate you. How are we doing? Great to see you as always. All right. Grimsy, what's good, dude? How are we doing, my guy? Good to see you on this uh, Saturday afternoon. As we're technically watching college football on another screen. Well, not really. It's kind of more just on in the background, but... Anyways, figured we would get this uh, episode out and rolling before, you know, the Sunday games happen. And then it just doesn't make sense to do the episode anymore, so... Um, yeah. Okay. So, let's get a roll in with... You're doing good? Hey, that's what I like to hear, bro. That's what I like to hear. Well, much love as always, dude. Appreciate you always stopping by. Alright. So, without too much further ado, let's get her going. So, to start off with Week 10, uh, All Hail the Sun God, aka my team, uh, had themselves a week, took down Kelsey Me Softly, the reigning and defending world champion of our league currently, uh, by a score of 200 to uh, 118. I, I haven't seen 200 in a while. I haven't hit it. I don't. This is the first time I've hit 200 points this season. We'll see. Ooh. Do, 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 do. Yeah, 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 there we go. What's good, Sir Blaze? Thank you, my guy. 35 recent. Wow, I can't even, I can't even talk. 35 months, dude. Appreciate you, my guy. You're a legend. Hope you're doing well, staying safe. How's your Saturday going, my guy? Thanks for uh, popping on in. Oh, yeah, we are just getting it started. Just doing a quick little, quick little, probably hour and a half stream or so here. Not even. Just doing this episode of Fancy House Live, and then we're gonna keep her going. Uh, but hell yeah, good weekend so far. So I like to hear, bro. But hope all is well with you guys. Ah, uh, not really. <laughs> Um, we've had unfortunate news with our kitty, um, so we're trying to, you know, make sure she's okay. But early indic early indications of saying are starting to point towards like some sort of liver cancer, which is less than ideal. So we're trying to figure that out. Um, yeah, but anyways, we don't need to get all into that right now. Let's uh, go into some fantasy football here. I appreciate you, my dude. Um, anyways, so, like I said, Kelsey Me Softly, or uh, not Kelsey Me Softly, All Hail the Sun God, uh, went off this week 200 points to 118. Uh, in our next matchup, I had Better on Paper, uh, taking the win over uh, Young Guns by a score of 92 to 85. Uh, in our third matchup, it saw Team Nugent uh, get the win over Bob's Burgers by a score of 150 to 78. In our next matchup, then, it saw CD's Nuts <laughs> uh, take the win over Peanut Oil by a score of 153 to 100. In our second to last matchup, and technically game of the week, uh, between our first and second place top dogs, it was D. Adams Family and Desert Swarm, with Desert Swarm picking up the win by a score of 112 to 80. And then in our last match of the week, it's a pool of dumpster water. Somehow getting a narrow win over Team Dicka by a score of 111 to 99. All right. <clears throat> so let's take a quick little dive into 
how all these broke down. So we'll take a look at the first matchup, which was All Hail the Sun God and uh, Kelsey Misoff. So make sure that's all set up nice and good. Move this over. Boom. Okay. There. Make sure it's all nice and centered. Okay. Then let's get to break it down. Perfect. Okay. So. Ooh, Sir Duke Nukem. What's good, dude? Appreciate you for stepping on by. How we doing? Good to see you on this uh, Saturday afternoon. What was that? Better on paper with a dub? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Picking up that massive dub. GG's. GG's all around. Look at that. Look at that. You and Pool of Dumpster Water, aka Nate's team, also picking up the win this week. Rare sighting this year. Hey, hey, hey. We take those. We take those. We try and take those. But... Good to see you, Dean. All right, let's get into how this broke down. Starting off with our QBs, we had Trevor Lawrence uh, only getting not even four points in a thrashing by the 49ers, which is just absolutely unfortunate this year, considering how good the uh, the Jags actually have been. On the opposite side, <clears throat> excuse me. On the, on the opposite side here, we have All Hail the Sun God with C.J. Stroud, who has been cooking as of late. Uh, with 22 points over that 22-27 uh, win over Cincinnati. Moving right along into the running backs. We'll stick with All Hill, the Sun Guide here, and Austin Eckler, a.k.a. the Muscle Hamster, uh, getting 21 points this week in a win over Detroit. Or Yeah, it was <clears throat> a win over Detroit. That's not what that says, bud. That is a loss to Detroit. But that was a high-scoring affair, so hey, I'll take it. Uh, while for Kelsey Misoffi, they had the rookie sensation B. John Robinson, who had kind of kind of cooled off a little bit towards the middle of the season here, uh, able to get 17 points, so able to start uh, kind of cooking again in a loss to Arizona. Then in our second matchup uh, for running backs, it was Kenneth Walker for Kelsey Misoffi, able to get 19 points in that win over Washington, while Najee Harris uh, seems to be in that kind of plug-and-play sort of situation with Jalen Warren in that backfield in Pittsburgh, able to get 18 points this week in a win over Green Bay. Tough to watch, tough to watch if you're a Green Bay fan, AKA me. Anyways, if we move right along into the wide receivers, we have Brandon Ayuk for Kelsey Misofta here, able to get 14 points in the win over Jacksonville. Uh, while Amon Ra, the aforenamed Sun God, able to get 30 points in the huge back and forth shootout uh, with the Chargers. Then if we stick with All Hail the Sun God and move into the, the next set of wide receivers here, we have Keenan Allen throwing up 40 points in that same game against Detroit, uh, although they the, uh, the Chargers being on the losing end, although not if you're, <laughs> not if you're a Keenan Allen owner. Uh, anyways, uh, for Kelsey Misofli, Tank Dell able to get 18 points this week in a win over Cincinnati. If we take a look at the tight ends, we have... Mr. Logan Thomas for Kelsey Me Softly, able to get only nine points, so pretty respectable actually, in a loss to Seattle. While Dalton Kincaid, able to get 16 points, the rookie sensation, kind of stepping in place for uh, Dawson Knox there in Buffalo, able to get 16 points this week in the loss to Denver. Then if we go into the flex spot, we have uh, we have <clears throat> Adam Thalen, Adam Thalen, Adam Thielen for uh, Kelsey Me Softly, able to get 10 points. Uh, in the loss to Chicago, I believe that one was on Thursday night. Uh, while TJ Hawkinson able to throw up 30 points in the uh, unexpected win over New Orleans. I don't think anyone was expecting Josh Dobbs to be cooking like that, but hey, I'll take it. Uh, if we move into the defenses, we have the Raiders defense throwing up six points in the win over the uh, over the Jets. While the Colts for Kelsey B. Softly able to get 13 points this week in a win over New England. Uh, then if we look at the kickers, we have Riley Patterson for Kelsey Softly here, able to get 12 points in the win over the Chargers, while Dustin Hopkins able to get 14 points, so almost matching that, or uh, almost matching it, he beat it, what am I talking about? Uh, Dustin Hopkins continuing to produce at unexpected levels for a kicker, uh, getting 14 points in the win over Baltimore. Um, all right. Let's move on into the next, which is Young Guns getting the win. You heard it here first over the Young Guns. Score of one, uh, 192, yeah, right, of 92 to 85. Perfect. Make sure it's all nice and framed up. 
That's framed up kind of decent. Okay. So, we'll start off once again with our QBs. At the top here, we have Taylor Heineke for the Young Guns here. Able to get 10 points this week in a loss to Arizona. While for better on paper, Lamar Jackson uh, getting 15 points in the uh, loss to Cleveland. Now, if we move into the running backs, we have Joe Mixon getting 12 points this week in a loss to Houston. While James Cook for the Young Guns able to get 12 points. So, nearly identical production out of both, uh, both running backs here. Able to get 12 points in the loss to Denver. Then if we move into the next set of running backs, we have Zach Moss, not able to even get one point. Then again, he is not the starting running back there in Indianapolis anymore, as, you know, JT has kind of stepped in and taken over that role. Uh, while the Gus bus kind of continues, he did score uh, last week, able to get uh, nine points this week, or I should say last week, in the loss to Cleveland, because even though we're used to saying Cleveland's bad, Cleveland is now a very good defensive team defensive team offense they they got they got work to do but uh but they are absolutely insane on defense absolutely insane against the run but nonetheless you can't stop the gus bus he's still able to score almost able to get 10 points if we move into the wide receivers we have the number of wide receiver ones we have gabe davis uh for better on paper here able to get nine points in the loss to denver just kind of part of that suffering job just suffering travesty that is josh allen this season uh just Man, that whole uh, Bills team just does not look good, unfortunately. While, well, there, there are parts of it that look good. When, you know, Allen isn't giving the game away by throwing a lot of interceptions, but it's like New Age Brett Favre. Anyways, uh, if we go into, except, you know, who is the better, that's a good question, who is the better arm? I don't know. Anyways. Uh, anyways, if we look at uh, the... Next wide receiver, the next wide receiver one for Young Guns here. It's DK Metcalf, able to get 16 points this week in a win over Washington. Uh, yeah, I had, I, I thought I had, I had, I had a train of thought. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Holy shit, English, English, English. Uh, lost my train of thought on it and no longer remember where I was going with it. So we're just gonna move on. Lol. Into the next set of wide receivers, we have Scary Terry for the Young Guns here. Able to get seven points in the loss to Seattle, while Darnell Mooney only able to get three points this week, even though winning uh, against Carolina. If we just stick with better on paper here, and we'll roll into the tight ends, we have Cole Komet uh, able to get nine points this week in a win over Carolina, while almost kind of identical production uh, out of these tight ends, except you wouldn't expect that Mark Andrews will only get six points before exiting and then it turns out as since it's been a few days he actually does have a season ending injury so no more mark andrews that is a huge blow to the young guns there um <clears throat> if we move into the flex we have christian kirk for the for the young guns here able to get 14 points in a loss to san francisco while for better on paper uh odell beckham jr finally showing up and doing something able to get 11 points this week in a loss to cleveland then moving into the defenses, and we'll just stick with better on paper here. Who had the Niners able to get 19 points in a win over Jacksonville? While for the Young Guns, the Seahawks only able to muster up four points this week in a win over Washington. Then finally, we take a quick little look at the kickers. We have Daniel Carlson only able to get 14 points this week in a win over the Jets, while Tyler Bass only able to get two points this week in a loss to Denver. All right, all right, all right. Moving right along. all right so starting off with the qbs once again we have none other than joe burrow uh able to get 23 points this week in a surprise loss to houston while for team nugent justin herbert able to get 31 points in a shootout with detroit but nonetheless that is still an l that he holds uh for Mr. Herbert. Then rolling into the running backs, we have Jameer Gibbs able to get 26 points in that huge win. Like I said, I've been saying this a lot. It's, it's, that game was a shootout nonetheless. What do you call it? What else are you supposed to call a 41 to 38 game? Jameer Gibbs able to get 26 points as he continues to have a pretty decent rookie season. Uh, Derrick Henry for Bob's Burgers only able to get three points this week, uh, which is not your average numbers for, you know, the king. Uh, Eve, and that was in a loss to Tampa. 
Now, if we take a look at the next set of running backs, we have Tyler Aljair. Aljair? Aljair? I think I'm saying it right. I don't know. My pronunciation is probably terrible, and I apologize. Uh, he was able to get four points this week in a loss to Arizona, while Antonio Gibson able to get 16 points this week uh, for Team Nugent in a loss to Seattle. Now, if we skip right on into the, the wide receivers, the first one, and we'll just stick with Team Nugent here. Uh, Jamar Chase able to get 23 points this week in a loss to Houston, while DJ Moore for... Uh, Bob's Burgers here, able to get 10 points in a win over Carolina. Then if we take a look at the next set of wide receivers, we have DeAndre Hopkins, but we'll just stick with Bob's Burgers here, who had five points this week in a loss to Tampa, while Mike Evans able to get 26 points this week in a big win over Tennessee. Now if we go into tight ends, and we'll just stick with Team Nugent here, who had Evan Engram only able to get five points team, uh, this week in a loss to San Francisco, while David and Joku uh, for Bob's Burgers able to get a pretty damn respectful 11 points in the win over Baltimore. Continuing right along into the flex, we have Garrett Wilson for Bob's Burgers, able to get 18 points in the loss to Las Vegas, while Jerry Judy able to get six points in the win... Uh, able to, yeah, able to only, blah, 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 only able to get six points in the win over Buffalo. Continuing straight on into the defenses, and we'll roll on with Team Nugent. Uh, the Bills continuing a respectable role, at least for this week. Uh, able to get six points in the loss to Denver, while the Lions, unfortunately, uh, throwing up negative points in that shootout with the Chargers, so they got negative four. Then if we go into the kickers, we'll just stick with Bob's Burgers to finish to start finishing it out here with Matt Gay, able to get five points in the win over New England, while Cameron Dicker, the kicker for the Chargers, able to get nine points in the loss to Detroit. All right. Oh, no, we don't need that. Moving right along, we have uh, CD's Nuts versus Peanut Oil. All right. And here we go. Once again, continuing with the QBs, we have Josh Dobbs. The I don't think anyone expected him to be as insanely good as he is right now, but here we are. Josh Dobbs uh, able to get 27 points this week in a win over New Orleans. Well, for Peanut Oil, Josh Allen uh, able to get 16 points this week in a loss to Denver. Then staying with Peanut Oil, and but moving into the running backs, we have uh, Josh Jacobs. See these nuts? Oh, that's fun. Also, I can totally do that because it's daylight. Daylight. Imagine me trying to do that during the nighttime. People would be fucking pissed. Anyways, um, where I? God damn it! I lost my train of thought again. Where were we? Oh yeah, Josh. Uh, Josh Dobbs able to get twenty-seven points this week in that win over New Orleans. Uh, it has him in his Cardinals uniform, which is throwing me for a whirl. Considering it's on the Vikings, it just got to keep up with it. Josh Allen able to get sixteen points in the loss to Denver. Uh, if we move into the running backs, Josh Jacobs able to get 12 points this week in a win over the Jets, while Aaron Jones able to get 9 points this week in a loss to Pittsburgh. Moving into the running backs, well, I should say the RB2s, but we'll stick with CD's nuts here, who had Rashad White for Tampa, only able to get 17 points in their win over Tennessee. Now if we look back over to Peanut Oil, who had Alvin Kamara able to get 18 points this week in a loss to Minnesota. If we look into the wide receivers, we have Marquise Brown for Peanut Oil, able to get only three points this week in a win over Atlanta. Uh, then if we skip on over to CD's Nuts here, who had Tay, Mr. Devontae Adams himself, able to get 14 points this week in a win over the Jets. And we'll just stick with uh, CD here, whose namesake himself, Mr. CD Lamb, able to get 39 points, so almost a 40 bomb himself, in that huge 49-17 win over the division, divisional rival Giants. Uh, Michael Thomas for Peanut Isle, not even two points, which is, you hate to, <clears throat> hate to see it in a loss to Minnesota. We move into the tight ends, and we'll just stick with Peanut Oil, who had Gerald Everett throwing up a goose egg uh, in that loss to Detroit, while Dalton Schultz able to get a respectable 11 points this week in a win over Cincinnati. If we move into the flex spot, we have Michael Pittman Jr. able to get 16 points this week in a win over New England, while Brian Robinson Jr. for Peanut Oil able to get 27 points, uh, almost dropping a 30 bomb, hell yeah, bro, uh, in a loss to Seattle. Now, if we move into the defenses, we have uh, we have the Cowboys 
who's continued to fucking dominate, dropping 11 points this week in a win over the Giants. Well, Cleveland, who it still shocks me that they have one of the best defenses in the league right now, uh, able to get 15 points in that win over Baltimore. Then if we go into the final matchup, which is the kickers here, uh, we're starting with Peanut Oil and Young Wei Koo, who was able to get five points in the loss to Arizona, while Justin Tucker able to get six points for CD's Nuts here in the loss to Cleveland. All right, all right, all right. Moving on into the second to last matchup and probably our featured game of the week uh, between our two, one and two overall top dogs. So, starting off with the Adams family uh, and Derek Carr, only able to get six points. I believe this was the game that he got injured, and then uh, Jameis had to step in, which, unfortunate. Uh, only able to get six points before that happened in that loss to Minnesota. While for Desert Swarm, Brock Purdy continues to look am shockingly amazing for someone that was taken as uh, Mr. Irrelevant. Able to get 26 uh, points in the win over uh, Jacksonville. Staying with uh, Desert Staying with the Desert Swarm here in Tony Pollard, who got five points in the win over the Giants, while Saquon uh, only got seven points this week in a loss to Dallas. Then, if we move into the next set of running backs, we'll just stick with Deanna's family here, and Rahamandre Stevenson, able to get 13 points this week in a loss to Indy, while Travis Etienne Jr., only able to get six points this week in a loss to San Fran for the Desert Swarm. Now, taking a, taking a quick little look at the wide receivers, staying with the Desert Swarm, we have Amari Cooper, Amari Cooper uh, able to get 15 points in the win over Baltimore, while Stephon Diggs able to get six points in the loss to Denver for the Adams family. If we move into the wide receiver twos, we have Chris Godwin here, able to get nine points for the Adams family in that win over Tennessee, while Cortland Sutton starting to cook the season as he, uh, him and Russ have actually been looking pretty damn good as of late, which is Another weird thing to be saying right now. Must have, must have stopped doing all those high knees on the plane. Anyways, uh, 17 points this week for Cortland in the win over Buffalo. Then if we go to the tight ends, we have Kate Otten, only able to get three points this week in a win over Tennessee for the Desert Swarm. While for D. Adams family and the... Uh, wow, what was I going to say? Um, <laughs> one of the tight ends from tight end U himself, George Kittle, able to get 26 point, or 20 points this week in the win over Jacksonville. If we take a look at the flex spot, we have uh, Jahan Dotson able to get, well, only unfortunately throwing up a donut this week in a loss to Seattle. I just need to speak slower. This is, I think, what I need to do here. Now, back for the Desert Storm here, we have David Montgomery able to throw up 17 points this week in a win over the Chargers. Uh... Now, if we continue into the defenses, we'll stick with Desert Storm here. Ravens able to get 13 points, which is actually pretty awesome. In that, uh, even though they took the loss, still getting 13 points is actually incredible. In that uh, loss to the chart, to the Chargers, to uh, Cleveland. While for D. Adams family here, uh, the Steelers, who have actually looked pretty damn uh, decent as of late, only able to get six points this week, even though they had Green Bay pretty much bottled up. Then, if we look at the kickers. We'll stick with uh, DM's family here and Evan McPherson able to get 11 points in the loss to Houston. While Brandon Aubrey, the rookie kicker for Dallas, able to get seven points this week in the win over the Giants. All right. And in our final matchup, it's uh, the pool of dumpster water picking up a win over Team Ditka. Quick little sip of coffee. All right. So, starting with the pool of Dumpster Water, who had Kyler Murray uh, this week, and he was able to get uh, 19 points in the win over Atlanta, while Baker Mayfield, this uh, for Team Dicka, able to get 21 points in the win over Tennessee. Then, if we go into the first set of running backs, we have Jonathan Taylor for Team Dicka here, able to get 14 points in the win over New England, while Christian McCaffrey able to get 20 points. Uh, for Pool of Dumpster Water in the win over Jacksonville. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, if we stay with uh, Pool of Dumpster Water here and Alex Alexander Madsen, able to get four points in the win over New Orleans. While Brees Hall for Team Ditka, able to get 10 points this week in the loss to Las Vegas. 
Staying with Team Dicka and the, but switching to the uh, wide receivers, we have Jordan Addison, who's actually looked pretty fucking awesome for uh, for Minnesota. Able to get 10 points this week in a win over New Orleans. While Chris Olave uh, for their, the Saints there, able to get 21 points this week in a loss to uh, Minnesota. If we move into wide receiver twos, we have George Pickens, able to get seven points this week in a win over uh, Green Bay, while Deontay Johnson, his good old teammate on that same Pittsburgh squad, able to only get uh, less than three points, 2.7 to be specific, in that win to Green Bay. Uh, if we look at the tight ends, but we will stick with Team Dicka here, who has Sam Laporta, who's uh, also been continuing to produce this season, able to get eight points this week in a win over the Chargers. Well, if we look at Pool of Dumpster Water here, who had Taysom Hill, the all uh, the gadget man there in New Orleans, able to get four points this week in the loss to Minnesota. Uh, just sticking with Pool of Dumpster Water here, but moving into the flex spot, we have Tyler Lockett, uh, able to get 23 points this week in a big win over Washington. While Jerome Ford, the presumed uh, RB1 there in Cleveland, uh, able to get 10 points this week in the win over Baltimore. If we t uh, take a look at the defenses, we have the Jets for Team Dicka here, able to get 10 points in the loss to the Raiders. While if we look at Pool of Dumpster Water, they had the Patriots, only able to get 7 points this week. I say only, but they are able to get 7 points this week in a loss to Indy. Um, if we take a look at the kickers, we'll stick with Pool of Dumpster Water here, who had Blake Groupie, another rookie kicker, able to get four points this week, versus Jake Moody, able to get, uh, I think, Jake, is Jake Moody another rookie kicker? I actually don't remember. Anyways, able to get ten points uh, for Mr. Moody this week against uh, Jacksonville for, uh, for Team Ticka. All right. Now, let's move on into the next section i just want to pull up my reference material where is it oh, ba -da -ba -ba. this 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 perfect okay so now we're gonna switch it up and show you the updated power rankings as of week 10. So, <clears throat> taking over the top spot in the league is now the Desert Swarm uh, with a record of 8-2. and two. Then, coming in at number, the, at number two, and this doesn't really make any sense to me, but probably because they're number one in the uh, other conference, but D. Adams Family coming in at number two with a record of 7-3. and three. Then, All Hail the Sun God coming in at number three despite having an 8-2 and two record. Probably because Desert Swarm and uh, All Hail the Sun God are in the same conference. Um, let's see. Oh, wait. No, Desert Swarm was still at number one. So the first three actually didn't change from last week, and I'm just a fool. Um, then if we take a look into number four, where Team Nugent is also just remained, uh, but this time has a record of seven and three. CD's Nuts up to seven and five from the sixth spot last week, up to six and four on the record on the season. Well, Team Dicka falls from the fifth spot to sixth uh, with a six and four record. Then, if we look in at the seventh spot, Peanut Oil uh, breaks even at uh, five and five. Yo, Cornholio, what's good, brother? How we doing? How we vibing? Welcome, welcome. Oh, we're just doing our. Uh, this is like our little fantasy football or community community fantasy football talk show thingy. I do like a review, power rankings, and. Uh, review power rankings and then a preview of like the next week and uh yeah this is this is that chilling man vibing better than earlier when i hit you up i feel that i see there's been another noti in the discord i haven't checked it out yet but we'll see <laughs> don't call it a comeback hey hey you breaking even and that that whole division is just uh that whole division is just uh wide open oh damn what's your team my team is uh all hail the sun god. I'm currently in third. I'm the third overall top dog. Eight and two. I don't know how I'm third despite having the second best record in the league, but hey, whatever. Um, but anyways. Um, oh yeah, we were doing the power rankings real quick. Where is it? Where were we? Oh nice, yeah, dude. It's not bad, it's not bad, it's not bad, it's not bad. Um, let's see, let's see. Team uh, Team Dicka. Team Dicka dropped down to six this week uh, with 
now a 6 and 4 record. Uh, Peanut Oil remained at 7 with a 5 and 5 record. Um, let's see, Kelsey Me Softly, our reigning and defending champion, has unfortunately remained at 8 with a 3 and 7 on the, uh, on the season. Then Pool of Dumpster Water getting out of the dumpster fires, uh, getting up to the ninth spot with a 3 and 7 record. Bob's Burgers, unfortunately, dropping down one spot into 10th with a 3 and 7 record. Then if we take a look, unfortunately, at our dumpster fires, we have the Young Guns dropping down uh, from 10th to now 11th with a 2 and record, two and 8 record on the season. And then in last, still, unfortunately, is Team Better on Paper, who sits at 2 and 8. I'm 6 and 4 in mine. Might actually make uh, my first fantasy football playoffs if I keep going off. Dude, hell yeah, bro. Uh, I better be making the playoffs. My team would need to implode. But you'll see who you'll see who my team is in a second because the next section that we do after this is we take a look at all of the next week's matchups in our preview of week 11. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna switch things up. Let me switch this scoreboard. Ba -ba -da -da, switch to this. Okay. Perfecto, perfecto. So this is what week 11 is bringing up. Scroll this down a little bit. Okay. So in our game of the week, we have two top dogs squaring off once again. We got All Hail the Sun God coming in at 8 and 2 on the matchup, taking out D Adams family, 7 and 3 on the record. Both uh, top dogs going head to head in this matchup. It's gonna be fucking good. Uh, moving into our second matchup this week, we have the Young Guns and Team Nugent. Team Nugent coming to this matchup at seven and three, while the Young Guns still trying to uh, look for look to be putting something together uh, at two and eight on the season. In our third matchup, we have Peanut Oil taking on Bob's Burgers. Peanut Oil sitting at a dead even five hundred, while Bob's Burgers trying to once again kind of another one of those teams that's trying to put something back together sitting at three and seven. Now, if we move into our fourth matchup, we have our number one overall top dog in the Desert Swarm. Uh, take it, or with it, coming into this matchup with an eight and two record, going against CD's Nuts with a six and four record on the season uh, comes CD. Now, if we move into the second to last matchup here, we have Team Dicka coming in at six and four, taking on the reigning and defending. Not doing so great. Kelsey Me Softly coming to this matchup at seven at seven and three. Yeah, right. He wishes he's coming to this matchup at three and seven. Reverse that. Uh, then in our last matchup, doesn't mean it's the least matchup. We have the Pool of Dumpster Water coming to the matchup at two and eight, taking on. Actually, this is kind of an interesting. It's the Pool of Dumpster Water taking on Team Better on Paper. Two and eight versus three and seven. You love to see it. All right. Now in our next little sectione here. We're actually going to take a deeper little dive into all of these teams and kind of take our picks at who is actually going to be. Exactly. We got hey, we got a preview of the Toilet Bowl right going on. Could this be the Toilet Bowl 2023? Honestly, maybe. Actually, no, it won't. Because if we go back to the power rankings, Pool of Dumpster Water is no longer in the Dumpster Fire. But there's still time. There's still time. Anyways. All right. Let's take a quick little look at how all of these games are going to break down and make some picks, eh? Let's break it down. So. In our first matchup, we have, like I said, uh, what was it? D. Adams Family and All Hail the Sun God, which is uh, my team, going head to head to top dogs. So. Starting off with All Hail the Sun God, who has CJ Stroud and Houston taking on Arizona versus Tua Tangabailoa and Miami taking on Las Vegas. I'm going to have to go with Stroud on this one. Um, trying, hey, even though this is my team, I'm trying to be impartial on this one. But Stroud and that Houston team have been cooking as of late. Uh, Arizona should be somewhat competitive, but I just think that Arizona's defense isn't quite as good. The Raiders' defense is actually pretty decent. Tua, I know that team is going to be electric because, you know, it's that Miami team, but they have dropped some of those games, uh, which has made them kind of sus. But nonetheless, I expect that game to be good nonetheless. But if we're talking purely on 
points wise, I think that Stroud might have the potential to just really light it up. Moving into the running backs, we have Austin Eckler and uh, Austin Eckler and the Chargers taking on. Wait, wait. Oh, Eckler. <laughs> I don't know why that confused me so much, but it's Eckler and the Chargers taking on Green Bay versus Saquon and the Giants taking on Washington. Um, hmm. I mean, Saquon hasn't been doing that great. I might ha might have to go with the muscle hamster on this one. Um, I hate to say it, but Green Bay sucks this season. Um, we have nothing going for us really on defense. Um, offense, we sometimes get things going, but yeah, I expect, honestly, it would surprise me if the whole Chargers team just goes off. Uh, Saquon, he's an awesome awesome back going against a Washington team that arguably made themselves weaker getting rid of both Montez Sweat and Chase Young so who knows maybe Saquon will be able to you know get a little bit something going but uh no Daniel Jones so it's gonna have a rookie QB uh so that one's gonna be kind of a crapshoot there but we'll see moving to the running back two we have Najee Harris and Pitt taking on Cleveland versus Javante Williams and Denver taking on Minnesota um Probably have to go with Javante Williams on this one. Uh, Najee Harris and Jalen War Jalen Warren have been uh, pretty much plug and play. Uh, each back has been pretty much they've pretty much got the same amount, honestly. Uh, and last week they scorched Green Bay. Uh, this week they get a much tougher task in Cleveland, who, like I said, is one of the best defenses in in the league right now. Uh, I don't expect like I expect them to be pretty stout. They're, shit, they might even be able to bottle up both backs, which is why we're looking at Javante Williams here, uh, Minnesota. Um, they are uh, they are pretty decent on defense, although Russ and the boys are starting to cook there. And uh, I expect Javante's been actually starting to look back to his old self um, before he had that. I think it was an ACL tear. Um, but in this one, I think I'm going to pick uh, Javante Williams in this one. We move into the wide receivers. We have Stephon Diggs and Buffalo taking on the Jets and taking on versus Amon Ra. The Sun God himself and Detroit taking on Chicago. You gotta go with Amon Ra. That matchup is just too juicy. Um, Amon Ra is too damn good. The whole all of two, Detroit, which feels weird to be saying, is too damn good. Chicago is just not very good right now. Stefan Diggs and Buffalo, as much as I love Stefan Diggs, Buffalo is just looking like a bunch of pretenders this season. The Jets, they have a very good defense. I wouldn't honestly surprise me. Like, I would, I would actually, the matchup between Sauce and Diggs is gonna be so good. Assuming Josh Allen doesn't play like Brett Favre and force him to triple coverage and give the game away. But if he can actually play like, you know, playoff Allen, ooh, maybe. Moving on to the wide receivers. Uh, wide receiver twos. We have... Had like a sneeze. Okay. Um, let's see. Playoff Allen can't win a game that counts either. I shit, you ain't wrong. Uh, thirteen seconds, man. Hey, good thing he ain't number thirteen. But yeah, that Jets Jets defense is actually fucking good, which is another thing that's weird to say now. Um, if we look at the wide receiver, no wide receiver twos, we have Keenan Allen. And the Chargers taking on Green Bay versus Devontae Smith and Philly taking on KC. Ooh, that KC and Philly matchup is going to be fire. I can't wait for that one. Oh, that's Monday night? Hell yeah. Thank you. Magnifico. Um, although, Keenan Allen said he has an AC sprain, but the dude just had a monster game. I'm going to pick him again. I'm like 90% sure that Jair is sitting out. Um, so I'm expecting Keenan Allen to, if not Keenan Allen, maybe Austin Eckler goes off, but I'm not sitting Keenan Allen against Green Bay. Um, but who is but that KC defense could be pretty good. Uh, Jalen Hurts does spread the ball around. Hmm. Start to use his feet. Devontae Smith, AJ Brown's been having an actually incredible season. Um, hmm. The matchup does technically favor Keenan Allen, but the AC joint uh, sprain does be a little bit concerning. Uh, but I guess you. <sighs> You know what? I think maybe Devontae Smith will have the better better game. We'll see. We'll see. But that's my pick is Devontae Smith. Uh, moving to the tight ends. We have TJ Hawkinson in Minnesota taking on Denver versus George Kittle and San Fran taking on Tampa. Oh. 
technically TJ Hawkinson is actually tight end, the number one tight end at his position right now. Um, he's pretty much must start against any team as Dobbs, even though he's still been kind of like working in that system, has instantly hooked, found himself hooking up uh, with Hawkinson and often for scores uh, and just a lot of fucking yardage. Since, since this is already a PPR league, that's just a lot of points. Um, George Kittle been kind of killing it actually as of late. Uh, all of that San Fran team has been cooking, although we said this is it's the same thing every every time with the San Fran team though, is that there's just so many mouths to feed, whether it's Ayuk, Debo, Kittle, McCaffrey, like someone someone's getting the ball, and that means if somebody else is getting the ball, that means Kittle's not getting the ball, you know? So if I had to go and the matchup is actually pretty favorable um for Tampa. I think also just because of how good San Fran is, but I'm going to rager that Hawkinson will have the better, the better day as Dobbs has just been thrown his way often. And he's Hawkinson's just a beast. Um, I'm not trying to throw throwing, not trying to throw any bias in there, but um, anyways, moving into the flex spot, we have Dalton Kincaid and Buffalo taking on the Jets versus Nico Collins. Houston taking on Arizona. Ooh, I'm going to have to go with Nico Collins on this one. Um, just because that Arizona defense is kind of uh, pretty ripe for the pickings. Dalton Kincaid, even though he is a rookie and it's all the things I've been seeing kind of like a lot online and up to this point, I've been that he's actually a stud. He's must start. Um, which is actually kind of going to why I'm going to start him against the Jets. Uh, because the one thing that the Jets have struggled against this season is, nonetheless, tight ends. So we'll see. Even though they do have a swarm of a defense, I'm going to pray that... Uh, should I throw Noah Brown in the flex? Um, Is he good? To, is he going to be good to go? I thought he had an injury designation, designation. If not, I would. Arizona's not that great. Um... Let's see. Uh, Dalton Kincaid, I'm just going to leave in there for now. Just because, like I said, Jets, they're weak against the tight ends. And uh, Allen's actually been looking Kincaid's way often. And uh, per looking, oh my gosh. He's been looking his way often, which has just been hu hugely beneficial to all of his owners. Um, in if we look at the defenses here, we have the Dolphins at Miami taking on the Raiders versus Steelers and Pittsburgh taking on Cleveland. Ooh. Steelers are going to go against a Cleveland team that's got, what, the, uh... Oh, he's still questionable? Yeah, there we go. Um, and they have Dorian, was it Dorian Thompson, I think, is taking, is taking snaps? While, uh, the Dolphins are going against Aiden O'Connell, the rookie. So, and the Dolphins are also, uh, have Jalen Ramsey, uh, Jalen Ramsey back. So I'm actually going to take, well, who has the worst offensive line though? Hmm. You know, give me the Steelers against Cleveland. Something tells me that they might be able to, uh, work something against Kenny Pickett and them boys. Although... It wouldn't surprise me that Aiden O'Connell has a few picks. Something tells me, though, that uh, Steelers are going to be good. Um, if we look at the kickers, Evan McPherson already has uh, thrown up at nine points. So we're just waiting to see what Dustin Hopkins does. All right. Let's move on into the next matchup, which is Young Guns taking on Team Nugent. All right. Starting at the top, we have Justin Herbert and the Chargers taking on Green Bay versus Patty Mahomes and KC taking on Philly. I mean, I, I feel like you just can't bet against Mahomes, right? Like, that matchup just seems too good. It's Mahomes. He's always going to do good. But this is Green Bay. Their, our defense isn't that great. The Herbert just dropped 31 like a week ago. As much as I don't want to go against Patty, give me, give me Justin Herbert. In, let's go running backs. Eagles secondary is hurting. But it's Patty Mahomes. It's Patty Mahomes, but so is ours. So is Green Bay secondary. I think, uh, I don't even know if Jair's starting. If Jair's starting, maybe we have a chance, but I'm not liking our chances in this one. But 
honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if Mahomes just goes off. Wait, 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 wait. wait. The bigger question is Taylor Swift going to be there in attendance? I was like, if Taylor Swift's going to be there, then then shit, you got to go Chiefs by a million because you know fucking Kelsey's going to go off. Depending on if Tay Tay goes to that game, that might be that might be swinging uh, Mahomes' way. Anyways, let's move into these running backs. We got Jameer Gibbs in Detroit taking on Chicago versus James Cook. Uh, James Cook and Buffalo taking on the Jets. Um, hmm. James Cook been pretty productive. Jameer Gibbs though on that on Lions offense though against. I'm so sick of Sw- I'm so sick of the Swift. Same, same, same. Not a Swifty. Never been a Swifty. Never will be a Swifty. But all I get shoved down my throat is Swifty, Swifty, Swift, 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 Swift. Swift. No, 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 no. Anyways, um, I'm going with Jameer Gibbs on this one. Chicago defense does kind of suck, even though they did add Montez Sweat. Um, but I think Jameer Gibbs is just too damn good. You got to keep the uh, rookie sensation going. Uh, if we move into the RB2s, we have Raheem Mostert in Miami. Uh, taking on Las Vegas, who's actually pretty damn good defense. Versus Royce Freeman and the Rams taking on Seattle. Um, I don't know if Royce Freeman's going to be the lead back there. I'm pretty sure... Is Darnell uh, Daryl Henderson's back and healthy? If that's the case, then uh, Raheem Mostert, obviously. Even though that uh, Las Vegas defense is going to be pretty good, Max Crosby and the boys—they've been absolutely on fire. Raheem Mostert, though, on a pretty damn explosive Miami team, so I would give me Raheem Mostert in this one. If we move into the wide receiver ones, we already saw Jamar Chase out of this one, so it kind of makes picking this one null and void for the moment. Uh, while DK Metcalf does go against a Rams defense. We'll see. Jamar Chase, though, um, able to get a touchdown, although he did lose Joe Burrow for the rest of the season. Now, if we move into the right wide receiver twos, we have Mike Swift. Why the fuck was I about to say Mike Swift? Jesus Christ. Mike Evans uh, and uh, Tampa taking on San Fran versus Scary Terry McLaurin and Washington taking on the Giants. Um... Uh, Honestly, give me Scary Terry in this one. Sam Howell has been balling. I think he's, I don't know if he's still top five in the league in passing yards, but Scary Terry, obviously one of those options that's going to get thrown too often. Now, Mike Evans, beast. Uh, Baker Mayfield, fucking dog down there in uh, Tampa. But this is San Fran. They're decent. Sam Howell's number one in passing yards. See? Sam Howell. I don't think anyone had Sam Howell being number one in passing yards in uh, anyone's bingo card. But, yeah, I don't... Yeah, that's insane. From a post I seen, not sure the source. I mean, I know he was top... At least top five, so... Him being number one would not surprise me, given that last time I remember seeing that was like maybe a few weeks ago. But, um, if we move into the tight ends, we got... This one is kind of null and void here with Mark Andrews. Uh, already playing and now being officially out for the rest of the season so that sucks for that baltimore team who had been cooking as of late uh evan engram jacksonville team uh they're going up against tennessee so we'll see tennessee not very good on well there's somewhat mediocre on defense but jacksonville better probably will pick up the dub in this one but we'll see uh any given sunday anyways in the flex positions we have jalen waddle and that insanely good Miami Dolphins team taking on Las Vegas versus Christian Kirk and Jacksonville taking on Tennessee. Give me Christian Kirk in this one. Like I was just saying, Tennessee, uh, pretty mediocre this season. Christian Kirk has been actually on fire. Him and uh, Trevor Lawrence have had insane connection this uh, this season. Jalen Waddle uh, has been pretty kind of injury prone this season. Uh, not exactly the same output that we saw last year where it was like both him and Ty Freak were just killing it this week or this uh, season we've just seen a lot of Ty Freak killing it apart from you know when Miami isn't just giving games away but uh, Waddle had a little bit of a down year still productive though because of just how insanely good that team is uh, if we look into the defense here we have the Bills taking on the Jets uh, while we have the Seahawks taking on the Rams um, hmm. Matthew Stafford, I think, is he healthy? Is Stafford healthy? Can't tell. I think he's healthy. Um, Seahawks, kind of, they're all right. They have, I think they know they bolstered up that defense a bit. Uh, the Bills defense 
is all right. Zach Wilson is not good. Um, hmm. Give me, I guess give me the Bills. I don't know why. I'm setting myself up for failure. Um, if we go the kickers, as so we move into the kickers here, we have uh, Cameron Dicker and the Chargers taking on Green Bay versus Jake Elliott and Philly taking on KC. I think Jake Elliott's going to get more points this week. Um, I think the Chargers just might run, might just run shop over Green Bay. But uh, if uh, Jake Elliott and KC get into, you know, a shootout or, you know, gets into, you see some stalled drives, hey, he's going to be your man. All right, moving into our next and third matchup, which is Peanut Oil taking on Bob's Burgers. There we go. All right, so it looks like we have some buys and adjustments that need to be made before tomorrow. Hopefully, motherfucking Bob's Burgers will update his team. I should probably make a post. Anywho, so we have Josh Allen and the Jets and Buffalo taking on the Jets versus Joe Burrow, who already played and is out. So that one kind of is null and void. But Josh Allen, going to be interesting to see if uh, Allen can play or if he's just going to channel his inner Brett Fart and uh, throw it into triple coverage. Um, if we move into the running backs, we have Josh Jacobs and the Raiders taking on Miami versus Derrick Henry and Tennessee taking on Jacksonville. Hmm. Derrick Henry kind of been down year. Tennessee's been kind of, uh, they have Will Levis. I think they're rolling with Will Levis. I know if I remember, I saw earlier this week that Ryan Tannehill actually requested to trade from the team um, or requested to be released. So that's pretty insane. Uh, Derrick Henry, I think he only had seven points uh, last week. Jacksonville, pretty damn good defense uh, this year, uh, this season. So I'm going to have to roll with Josh Jacobs, even though he got a tough task in Miami. If we look in, there's no set of RB2s because both these teams are on bye. So both Alvin Kamara and Tyler Algier. Moving straight on into the wide receiver ones. We have uh, Cooper Cup and the Rams taking on Seattle. Where's DJ Moore in Chicago taking on Detroit. Got to go with Cooper Cup and the Rams just because it's Chicago. I'm not going to, in the way that these... New look lines have been playing. They just been absolutely on fire. Sorry, Chicago, not not happening. I I I think Fields might be back, but I don't think that's going to make a difference. That Detroit defense is too good. Uh, moving into the wide receiver twos, we have Marquise Brown in Arizona against Houston versus DeAndre Hopkins in Tennessee versus Jacksonville. Uh, I, the, the matchup isn't favorable for either of these. Um, but, you know, give me, I like, I think Will Levis is still going to attempt to be throwing to DeAndre. Marquise Brown at least has Kyler back with more time. So I'm going to take a, I'm going to take a guess and go Marquise Brown on this one. Um, moving the tight ends. Looks like Gerald Everett's already been ruled out. So David Dinjoku, I guess, against Cleveland and Pitt. We go in the flex spot. We got Garrett Wilson and the Jets taking on Buffalo versus Brian Robinson Jr. in Washington taking on the Giants. I think Brian Robinson Jr. is going to have the better, better day. Giants just are absolutely mid the season by all shapes, by all shapes and by all means. They have been not good. Uh, Garrett Wilson, despite the fact he has been actually pretty decent, all things considered. He was supposed to have Rodgers thrown to him, but that only lasted four plays. And now he's got Zach Wilson. And uh, it hasn't always been that great, but he's just such a stud that he has been actually making things produce. He does get a kind of uh, tough ask in Buffalo, uh, which is another reason why I'm going with Brian Robinson on this one. If we move into the defenses, we have Cleveland taking on Pitt versus the Lions taking on Chicago. This one's a no-brainer to me. Got to go with the Lions. Just Chicago is just bad, 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 bad. And the Lions are very good. So, And then if we take a look at the kickers, oh, it doesn't look like we have any kickers this week as both these kickers are on by. Moving on into the next matchup, which is the Desert Swarm taking on CD's Nuts. All right. Starting off with the uh, Desert Swarm, we have Brock Purdy and San Fran taking on Tampa versus Jalen Hurts and Philly taking on KC. Uh, as much as I love Jalen, Hulu has live sports. I mean, Hurts. Um... I'm going to roll Brock Purdy on this one. Um, ten, uh, the Tampa Bay defense is kind of mid, uh, and that ins that San Fran San, San Fran offense is just too insanely good to just you know put aside. Um, 
let's see. Um, if we move into the next set of running backs, we have Tony Pollard in Dallas uh, taking on Carolina versus Aaron Jones in Green Bay taking on the Chargers. Give me Tony Pollard in this one. As much as I love Aaron Jones and they need to feed Aaron Jones, the Chargers have Joey Boza and Khalil Mack on that defensive line. Um, we'll see. And it feels like there's been games where our game plan is to pretty much make Aaron Jones invisible. So... As a Packer fan, that sucks to see. Um, anyways, that's why I chose uh, Tony Pollard. Dallas, too damn good of an offense going against Carolina. Not very good. So that is uh, unfortunate. Or uh, that is just the uh, pretty based on the matchups there and the uh, offenses that they are on. Moving into the next set of running backs, we have Travis Etienne uh, in Jacksonville taking on Tennessee versus Rashad White in Tampa taking on San Fran. I'll go with uh, Travis Etienne in this one. Jacksonville, pretty good team going against mid uh, defense in Tennessee. Well, Rashad White uh, gonna going against what could be a buzzsaw defense in San Fran. Moving into the wide receivers, we have Devontae Adams in Las Vegas taking on, uh, and look, the Raiders taking on Miami versus someone who else is going to be in that game, Mr. Ty Free Kill himself. Uh, hmm. Jalen Ramsey is back for the Dolphins. I'm not sure. I don't even know who the corner is for the top corner is for the Raiders. So we're going to go in with Ty Freak having the better uh, beat. Moving to the next set of wide receivers, we have Cortland Sutton in Denver taking on Minnesota versus CeeDee Lamb and Dallas taking on Carolina. Oh, got to go CeeDee Lamb on this one. The man had almost 40 points last week. I expect this man to cook again this week in against Carolina. Moving to the tight ends, we have Trey McBride in Arizona taking on Houston versus Dalton Schultz in Houston taking on Arizona. So these, again, two tight ends taking on each other. Um, we're going to go Dalton Schultz on this one. Uh, he's actually been, just because of how good that, unexpectedly good, I might add, that that Houston team has been. And Dalton Schultz, even though not always the focal point, CJ Stroud doing a very good job of spreading that ball out to um, m multiple wide receivers and his tight end. So... We all know what Dalton Schultz can do in uh, and has done in Dallas, and he's going to continue to do that here in Houston. And based on this matchup, I totally think that Dalton Schultz is going to have the better day against uh, than uh, Trey McBride. In the flex, uh, we got David Montgomery in Detroit taking on Chicago versus Jake Ferguson, another tight end in Dallas taking on Carolina. we we'll got to go David Montgomery on this one, even though uh, there are going to be times that Detroit has shown signs that they can kind of split carries between Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery. Whichever, you know, kind of the hot hand sort of deal. And I expect that to be kind of the same here, deal here. But nonetheless, because of how porous that uh, Chicago defense is, I think that David Montgomery is probably going to have the better chance to throw up uh, more points than Jake Ferguson. Although Jake Ferguson is a very good red zone target for Dak in, um, as well as CD. But I just expect, um, I'm, just because of the use of David Montgomery, uh, I expect him to just edge him out because he's obviously playing. He can be both running back and line him out wide for, you know, throw, throwing and not, throw him out wide for receiving yards. Uh, if we move into the defenses, we have uh, the Ravens who have already played. So they already have seven points, but Cowboys have, have a very juicy matchup in Carolina. Then if we look at the kickers, uh, Justin Tucker has already played, throwing up 11 points. That's awesome to see. While Brandon uh, Aubrey, rookie kicker taken uh, in for Dallas, taken on Carolina. That's another juicy matchup. Um, all right. We have two matchups left. So we have Kelsey Me Softly versus Team Ditka. All right. Team Ditka has Justin Fields. Uh and Chicago taking on Detroit versus Trevor Lawrence. Jacksonville taking on Tennessee. Um, Detroit is very good. Fields, if he is healthy and can stay healthy, is a dual as a dual threat. Could be insane. But Trevor Lawrence is actually been pretty, doing pretty damn good. Tennessee, like I've been saying, they kind of a mid defense this season. Um. I think I'm going to go with Trevor Lawrence having the better day. If we move into the running backs, we have Jerome Ford in Cleveland um, taking on Pittsburgh versus Kenneth Walker in Seattle taking on the Rams. If I had to guess, uh, I'd say 
Oh, we're deemed to hydrate. You know, it's actually a good idea. Do I have actual water? I do. As it sounds like a gong as I bounce it off the floor. Oh boy, so much talking. And I had a dentist appointment too yesterday, so. Ooh wee. There's a lot. Um Oakley Dokley. Let's do this. So where were we? Oh yeah, Jerome Ford and Kenneth Walker. Um I'm gonna guess. You know, even though I like Pittsburgh's defense, because it's got TJ Watt and they just seem to be performing pretty damn well. Give me Jerome Ford in this one. I think. Uh, if I think they might be able to handle TJ Watt a little bit, so I think Jerome Ford might be able to get them into field position, but we'll see. I know they're going to be running the rock a bit more too because they got their uh, rookie QB, Kenneth Walker, having a damn good season, but the Rams kind of mid defense as well. But um, I think uh, I'm just going to guess that uh, Jerome Ford is going to have a better better uh, week this week. In the RB twos, we have Brees Hall and the Jets taking on Buffalo versus Ty Chandler and Minnesota taking on Denver. Ooh. I mean, even though the matchup is pretty good for um, Ty Chandler in Denver, I think I'm going to roll Brees Hall on this one. He's been cooking this season, even though he is on a Jets team that's been kind of hindered by uh, the Zach Wilson's play a little bit and, you know, injuries. If we move into the wide receivers, we have A.J. Brown in Philly taking on KC versus Brandon Ayuk and San Fran taking on Tampa. Purely based on how damn well philly has been playing and aj brown's season i'm gonna go aj brown although aj uh brandon Ayuk has also been cooking the season but he is kind of victim to that uh uh too many mouths sort of thing too many mouths to feed on that offense if we move into the next set of wide receivers uh we have tank dell and houston taking on arizona versus jordan addison and minnesota taking on denver tank dell oh i like this but I'm actually going to guess Jordan Addison uh, in Denver, even though you're, you're probably going to see some Patrick Sertain, a lot of Patrick Sertain, I would expect. Uh, Addison has been still finding a way to produce, even with Dobbs at QB. Tank Dell, I expect him to actually have himself a pretty uh, damn good day as well. Arizona is not a very good defense, uh, but because of how CJ Stroud does typically spread the ball around, although... We did find out earlier in the stream slash this that Noah Brown is technically carrying an injury designation, so that could actually boost Tank Dell's value quite a lot. Um, if we go into the tight ends, we have Sam Laporta and Detroit taking on Chicago versus uh, Travis Kelsey and KC taking on Philly. Ooh. This, Sam Laporta's been killing it this season as a juicy matchup against Chicago, but... Hey, man. Swift's in the house for Travis Kelsey, man. Travis Kelsey's going to go off. Um, he's also been having a hell of a season. Philly is banged up. I think they, I think I saw they lost to Kobe Dean for the season. That's one of their linebackers. So, um, give me Kelsey in this one. If we go into the flex spot, we got Deontay Johnson in Pittsburgh taking on Cleveland versus Adam Thielen in Carolina taking on Dallas. Oof. Um... Man, these are not good matchups for either. But mm, I guess Dallas secondary pretty good. Cleveland secondary, or second, their defense in general is pretty good. Ah, uh, give me Deontay Johnson just because I don't trust Bryce Young very much, especially against that Dallas secondary. Um, if we move into the defenses, we got the Jets taking on Buffalo versus the Commanders taking on the Giants. Um, give me the Commanders in this one to throw up more points. Um, just because th they're going up against a rookie QB that is currently living at home with his parents. Uh, so uh, give me the Commanders to uh, kind of mess them up. Jets, if we get Josh Allen that plays like shit, then I expect the uh, Jets to have a decent amount of defensive points. In the kickers, we got Jake Moody. And San Fran taking on Tampa versus Riley Patterson and Detroit taking on Chicago. Um, 
Give me Jake Moody to have more points in this one, just in case uh, Tampa does stall out somehow against, uh, or San Francisco somehow does decide to uh, um, slow them. I think Jake Moody might have it. Well, whereas Detroit, I think is just going to be kind of like a buzz th- buzzsaw through uh, Chicago. All right, last game, certainly not least. Who had this? This dude's already got 84 points. Holy shit! It's only been there was a lot invested in that one game. Uh, anyways, better on paper, taking on pool of dumpster water. 80 points in one game. Jesus, paid off huge. Holy shit! Lamar Jackson going off for 26 points in that win over Cincy. Kyler Murray got. I swear, if I lose, well, I mean, we could take a look at it. Let's see. Kyler Murray on a Kyler Murray on a mid Arizona team right now. Sorry, Intel, if you're watching. Anyways, uh, going against Houston, I don't think Kyler is going to be cooking as much. Lamar already has 26 points. Christian McCaffrey is going to be the one you're going to have to worry about because obviously he, that man's going to fucking eat, especially against a Tampa team, even though they are again a mid defense. Joe Mixon though, you got some base there because he had himself 21 points. Now here's where I think you're really going to stand out because I do not believe that. Daryl Henderson Jr. is going to be able to match that 21 that you're going to get from the Gus Bus, especially because that man scored two touchdowns. So I am full aboard that you're going to at least have a one touchdown lead, if not two for sure. Uh, now, if we take a look at the wide receivers, now this is where things are going to get interesting because Gabe Davis, it's hard to tell. If what version of Josh Allen are we going to get? If we get, you can touch my down. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Turnover on downs. What? What? Anyways, uh, Gabe Davis. Uh, Gabe Davis is kind of one of those like it really depends on the game script because Allen has shown flashes where he's fucking awesome and that whole offense flourishes where it's Kincaid, Diggs, Davis all getting touches Uh, but on the other side here Lockett who is coming to the matchup with a questionable designation so it's going to be kind of yeah I mean you had if you Josh Allen's Brendan if you had a better Josh Allen, Gabe Davis would be legit, but that's just unfortunate. So he might have you on the edge of Tyler Lockett just because it's Tyler Lockett with uh, who seems to be one of Geno's favorite targets. That isn't named Decaf. But if we go into the second wide receivers, we have Curtis Samuel in Washington taking on the Giants versus Michael Gallup in Dallas taking on Carolina. I don't even know. These two might score something similar. I haven't seen Gallup get thrown to that much. Um, so I'm going to go with Curtis Samuel on this one. Um, he has a favorable matchup even with uh, the Giants, even though I don't. none of these guys are the number one wide receivers in their respective teams. So Gallup had one game this year. Let's see. What's the game script say for Curtis Samuel? He's, at, he's probably had a little bit more consistency. Oh, yeah. Curtis Samuel. <laughs> um, okay. If we go to the tight ends, we have Cole Komet taking on Detroit versus Logan Tom- Thomas in Washington taking on uh, the Giants. Mm. I'm going to have to go with Logan Thomas. I just don't trust Chicago against Detroit at all. Um, if we go into the flex, we got OBJ going off for 15 points, four receptions, 116 yards in that win over Cincy. Well, we got George Pickens, who's got a very tough matchup this week against Cleveland. Um, yeah, I, yep. So I can't really pick on that one. But it'll be it'll be a tough matchup in there. Uh, then you have then if we look at the defenses, we have San Fran going against the uh, San Fran going against Tampa versus the Vikings taking on Denver. That's again Niners got a favorable matchup against uh, Tampa. Denver gonna it's kind of mediocre. This is a battle of mid between these two teams. If we look at the kickers, he's got a. He's got a a Blake Groupie in New Orleans who's on a bye, so he's going to have to pick up a kicker. So you got Tyler Bass, who's probably going to play somewhat of a factor in that game against uh, the Jets. All right. And that concludes that. So now we got our next and kind of last little section here, which is we are going to take our picks at the game's or at the remaining games because Thursday already happened, so we're not going to take we're not going to take that one into account. Um, can I just do scores, or is it just going to do Sunday? Okay, this is a pain in the ass. 
schedule. There we go, this is the only one. Okay. Make sure there's not two Sunday night games? Okay. So let's get rid of that. That was a dumb. Let me try that again. Okay, these are the remaining games. Do, do, do. And then we're going to switch this. The man is huge hitter, miss. 100%. Oh shit, I gotta save. I gotta save the pick. Oh wait, hang on. Dur, I know what I'm doing. Act like you've done this before. Here it is. Okay. Uh, da -da -da -da. Where is brush? Pink. Okay. So, first game we got is Cowboys taking on the Panthers. Uh, cow. Fuck. I thought that was a paintbrush. There we go. Give me the boys. Steelers, Browns. Oh, boy. Browns have a backup QB. Browns at home. Miles Garrett. Potential to wreck the game. You know what? Give me the fucking Steelers in an upset. Bears, Lions. Lions. Uh, Chargers, Packers. At home. Do I pick the boys or do I get burnt? Do I be realistic again with myself? Yes, let's be realistic. I think the Chargers are going to win. Cardinals and Texans. Texans. Titans, Jags. Jags. Raiders, Dolphins. Ooh. Raiders, Dolphins. That's a good one. Give me the Dolphins. Houston not sucking has me hyped. Exactly. Houston not sucking has been fucking thr thrilling me as a CJ Stroud owner. Giants Commanders. We're going to go Commanders. Niners Bucks. Niners. Jets Bills. At the Bills. You know what? Give me the Jets. Rams, Seahawks, Seahawks. Vikings, Broncos. Give me Josh Jobs. All right. There's the picks. Oh, wait. And the Monday Night Game. Ooh. Give me my homies. All right, that's the picks. That's it. Save this. All right. And that is uh, pretty much it. That's what I'm going to call it. The swift rumor mill is that both the Kelsey family. And oh, fuck. I, for I heard that too. I heard. Yeah, the parents are meeting each other. His parents are meeting her parents. Oh, yeah. Fucking Chiefs by a million. Chiefs are not losing. Chiefs by a million. Sorry, Philly. They're, they're, they're meet, the parents are meeting. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over, dude. Eagles are donezo. But. All right, y'all. It's like a date on national television. Again.
All right, y'all. I'm gonna call it here for as far as the uh, stream goes. Um, I think the wifey's probably gonna be on the way home, if not already on the way home from her class. So I just wanted to get this episode of Fantasy House live in. So if you guys are here in the stream, uh, thanks for uh, tuning in, coming in, chit chatting while we did this. And the NFL won't shut shut up about. It. Oh yeah, they'll, they'll have a camera on it. They'll have Swifty Vision. I'm sure it'll be a thing. Thanks uh, so much for tuning in. If you guys are gonna be, if you guys are checking out this video on YouTube, hey, thanks for stopping on by. Thanks for checking out the video. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Additionally, if you want to comment or uh, you know, follow or uh, you know, share out the video, that greatly helps uh, uh, this this dude out. As we you know, we are still building out this community. Um, I know technically the streams are taking a bit of a, a backseat, just a hair. Exactly. Hi YouTube. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for chilling for a little bit for a stream. Um, we will see if there's a stream later on tonight um actually i take that back there won't be a stream tonight because there is motherfucking f1 race tonight no i was like there's i was like no there's f1 tonight so uh if you guys are interested in watching some f1 or you know any red zone and whatnot we do all that stuff in our discord the link showed up over there but you guys can get it. It's also in the description of uh, all of my videos on YouTube. So you guys have been amazing. Thanks for chilling. And uh, I will catch you guys later. If you guys are already in the Discord and watching football, as I have been literally signing off. You guys are amazing. Love the shit out of you. Have an amazing rest of your day. And I will see you next time. Peace out. Stay safe. Much love. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.